you're invited I want to live your best life I want to have no worries I want to have no worries Oh, it's a new day and you're invited I want to live your best life I want to have no worries Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Trending SA on SABC3. You know what we do during the ad breaks? We dance yeah. a lot, obviously. But then, try. Okay. Mm -hmm. We teach each other dance moves. Mm -hmm. And then we scroll through all of the things that you've been sending to us and talking to us. It's so fantastic to hear from you. So please keep your tweets and RTs coming through. The hashtag to use is ZA on 3. It is now time for Worth a Follow. Our Worth Follow guest tonight is KwaZulu Natal, born musician who has caught the attention of international artists like Stormzy, Diplo. Do you know who these are? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he does. I do. <laughs> um, he's been dubbed the Zulu Skywalker, and uh, his music is both uniquely South African. You can feel it. You know it's South African, but it's also so universal because it tells so many stories. Um, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Muzi, the Zulu Skywalker, all the way from the internet. Hello. Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. Muzi, it's so nice to finally see your face on the show because we play your music all the time. I don't know if you know the show, but we dance a lot, we sing a lot, and this song is often our entry song onto the show. So, welcome to Trending SA. I've seen the Insta stories. Nice, nice. Um, listen, some people may not know this, but you were part of the hip hop trio WTF of Nomusa fame. So, what what uh, influenced your decision to leave the group at the height of its success? Um, well, I left them at um, 2011. I started the group, and then I left because basically we were going to the So, I decided to do my own thing. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So then you ventured off uh, into making beats for hip hop artists like JR and Ricky Rick. And then you decided to literally change your tune and then you stopped creating beats for other artists and you just kind of, what, would you just focus on yourself? What happened there? Um, uh, uh, my heart got broken. <laughs> In regards to like making music for other people, there's some ideas that I wanted to execute. Um, so I just decided to do them on my own. I executed myself. So, yeah. I'm, I'm so impressed by your debut single, Nizo Koala. The success is absolutely incredible. You landed a publishing deal in London and then you moved to London to Berlin for two years. Tell us how that transpired. Um, well, my um, my manager and I were in Joburg and then I made this one song. Uh -huh. And um, we sent it to like all our friends and then the guy that picked it up was the head of um, BMG in London, and he loved it so much that he was like, "Okay, cool, like be signing for publishing." Wow. It was all, like, all on one song. So crazy. Talent, about like, like one song. Hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was That's crazy. When you know you've got it. Yeah. Mm. Right. So you spend a lot of time in Berlin at that point in Ooh. time, and in this time, you know, you're living, you're eating Berlin, you're walking the streets of Berlin, but also you're exposing yourself to all the music that exists in Berlin. But you become very yeah. famous not only in Berlin, but I guess like in bits and pockets of Europe. How, why do you think South African artists become so popular overseas and not so popular, especially with like the weird kind of music that you do? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I think, I think it has a lot to do with like our like history and um, where there was a time where African music was the thing to make. And then after a while, it, um, some, something changed somewhere. So now if you make music that sounds like home, you sort of have like a harder time in the market. I don't know why that is. Mm. Um, mm. But yeah, overseas, they appreciate that because they don't have it. Mm. So mm. it's like, that that's the thing that happened to me where I was making modern African music and people were getting it that side because it was something that they didn't have. Mm. Mm. That's amazing. So is that how you would describe the genre that you have created or that you're pushing? Is it modern African music and what influences it? Um, yeah, so it is modern African music, but it's yeah. like it's taken from Abo Brenda, Abo Chikotwala, Abo Splashy, Abo Steve Kekka, and nice. all these people. The legends. So, yeah, doing original music, but then now we have computers and samplers and all that stuff. So we have to take from what they, from where they left off, and then push it forward. So that's what I'm trying to do. 
Okay, so this album that we've all fallen in love with so much is titled Afrovision. Tell us more about the themes, the inspiration behind it. Uh, talk us through, you know, Zulu Skywalker. Talk to, through us through, you know, Sunset KZN. Talk, talk us through the theme. Um, well, the theme of it was um, sort of like my vision of where like African people go. And I'm like super obsessed with Africans being in space. Mm -hmm. Or like white people. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that was like the theme like throughout like the album where it's almost like we're transcending. You know, it's almost like my little version of like Wakanda, mm -hmm. but like mm -hmm. audio version of it. Mm -hmm. Where... <laughs> Because we are, we are like technologically advanced as well. Like we're not so it's like me taking all of that and putting it into the music. It's really amazing. Um, I remember like at your album launch, you were saying like, if this was to be like an intro sequence of like Shaga Zulu walking into the space and like, you know, with his people, this would be what it sounds like, you know, or if this would be the first African space. This is yeah. what it would sound like, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going for. It's like we should be proud of like all that stuff, all our, of our history. Mm -hmm. But then we should also continue telling the story so that future kids can have. We can be the historical figures, mm -hmm. or else you know, it's always going back to the 1800s. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. I mean, often when people think about um, you know this kind of African Renaissance and decolonization, we think we're going back somewhere. But culture and music yeah. and everything is dynamic, so we're building something new all mm -hmm. the time, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you're definitely doing that. Um, okay, so what's next? What's in the mix? I know you, the latest project is out. What, what's next? Where can we see you? How can we experience the magic that is the Zulu Skywalker? Um, well, I'm playing at Rock and the Daisies this weekend, Ooh. so that should be cool. um, I'm working on like more music videos from the album. Yeah. Like, I think I'm going to do four or five more just to continue telling the story. Mm. Uh, and then I'm also like making new music. I'm um, about to work with da Damon Album from Thrillers, so that's something Ooh, to do. Wow. So it's just like a lot of things that are in the pipeline. <laughs> so do you funny. pinch yourself sometimes? Like, is this my life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very surreal. Very surreal. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> well, listen, it's been so wonderful having you um, with us, Muzi. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad I'm finally on the show. Uh, maybe I can be on a few Insta stories now. Hashtag Tao and Pete. <laughs> Make us your backup dance. Yeah, we love it. We love it. Muzi, everybody. <laughs> Bye. All right, friends, it's time now for Vavas J. Eh? And then, of course, we continue. There's more. There's, there's more. Are there no more? Then no more. There's no more. Okay. Okay, yes, yes. Next up is the Queen oh, herself. Oh, there are more. Mm, there are more. Oh, Next no. up, we've got the Queen herself, Ubi Umo Girl. Um, she may be facing some legal woos, but she definitely added a lot of aromats to her glow up. Remember the early days of Bonang when she used to roll with the Kanyimba? Oh, Nangas. Oh, Shololos, look at them. Looking all gorgeous, blue eyes. If you take our photos from then, we all looked like that. No, of course we did. We looked smaller. We all did our eyebrows and like makeup that. makeup and 90s and stuff. But we all had that Tipex looking lipstick. It's mm -hmm. what we did. But guys, wait. Clearly, she has always been about the lashes, darling. This mm. is what the queen looks like now, guys. She looks like a king. Oh, hey. gorgeous. She looks she really absolutely is. gorgeous. I almost swore. You know what? Mm. Also, Shawa. like the, the the quality of our cameras are better. We can take mm. better pictures of people. We can really see who they are now. Mm. And also the, the the access to all of the glow up things, right? Yes. So hair things, nail yes. things. I'm finding that things are more accessible these days. Absolutely. So guys, I agree with you guys. We stand with the queen, and that's all for tonight's Vavas J segment. Money. For aromats. Money is important. Okay, we'll uh, be right it's back. It's not about money. Money is important. Our with Duke Singanga. Thank you, Musa. Money. No. You are not here for nine. Hey, it's mine. Long face like rich Foster's mean mug. OG, Les Mumford, senior. Thin line between genius and diva. On the road to rich heights.